Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. It's been a couple of weeks now since the Modern Warfare reveal where a select few YouTubers and media got invited by Activision and flown out to the Infinity Ward HQ to see the reveal of the game firsthand in person. I was not invited to that event. I just didn't get to go, and so I've been waiting just like you guys to see more gameplay since the original trailer dropped. But thankfully, at E3 2019, I managed to get into a behind-closed-doors gameplay reveal thing of Modern Warfare and sit through about 20 minutes or so, I would say, of footage inside the kind of off-limits Activision meeting room thing for media, rather than on the show floor or anything like that. And so, I figured this would be a good opportunity to give you my honest thoughts about what it was that I actually saw. So now, we're in the Modern Warfare area with Activision and there's gonna be a presentation. And just like that, we're done. Thank you, appreciate it. Onwards to 2K. And before anyone asks, no, this isn't a sponsored video. I don't have any disclosure to give. They didn't pay for my flight or my hotel, nothing like that. These are just gonna be completely raw, unfiltered thoughts from someone who saw the gameplay reveal, wrote down a load of notes, and has recently, to be completely honest, felt like Activision have been doing a pretty poor job with Call of Duty, so. This should be a fun video. The first thing they did was they showed us a little video from two of the main devs at IW, and those devs said the following. They were like, we went round the world, and we asked gamers what they want in a Call of Duty title. And across the board, time and time again, the thing that we kept hearing is that players want a Call of Duty game with gameplay ripped from the headlines with morally grey realities and morally complex realities present throughout. Now, I don't know about you. I do not know about you. But personally, when I think of COD, I don't think of, like, a morally provocative and hyper-realistic game. They kept talking about realism, how it's going to be the most realistic COD ever. And I'm sitting here like, I don't want to play a milsim. I don't want to play something where I die in one bullet. Like, that would be hyper-realistic. What I want is just that old COD DNA to come back, really. And so it was just interesting that they were really pushing this whole idea of moral complexity, the grey area of war, and all of these themes that I'm not necessarily against. Like, I don't necessarily think that that shouldn't be in a COD game. It's just that that seemed to be the foundational pillar on which the entire rest of the experience was built. And that's something that we will come back to in a moment when I get to talking about further in the demo. The first thing we see, there's been an attack in London. It's very much shot like a trailer rather than just gameplay. Like, there's lots of cuts to black, lots of sort of scene switching of you being in one location and then another. Didn't really feel like an actual gameplay preview as much as it did just an extended trailer, I guess. And honestly, the only takeaway that I got from all that stuff was that one of your teammates is called Crowley, or Crowley, and it looks very nice. To be completely honest, Call of Duty in the last couple of years, in my opinion, has felt like it has been lacking a little bit in the graphics department. Black Ops 4 has this kind of modular, blocky aesthetic that I really personally don't click with, and Infinite Warfare, COD World War 2, there's just something about the style in there that didn't really resonate. But this game looks much improved from those previous games. And granted, it's an E3 slice, so we don't know if the full game is actually going to look like this. The full game could look significantly worse because that's just how game dev works. Or it could look better. It's going to take the next four months of polish and work for us to really know what the end product is going to look like. But for now, the slice at least, their projection of what they think the end product will look like, looks good. Also, I'm just adding this in post because I just remembered it. The animations on the other soldiers in your team looked phenomenal. So normally NPCs in these sorts of games can look a little bit weird. They move a bit robotically, but just seeing the way the other soldiers' arms were moving, the way they were holding their guns and gesturing and doing things in the space around you looked fantastic. So 
animators at IW, I salute you. You've done a really good job here. The second mission, though, is the thing that I want to really zoom in on in this video. So it starts out with the kind of generic thing that you might have expected from previous Call of Duty games where there's a blueprint on screen, loads of maps of plans of what we're going to be doing, and you've got Price in your ear saying, right, this is a terrorist cell. They've got a safe house in London. We're going to go over there, we're going to get this thing, and then we're going to do this and do that. Sneaky beaky like. It then cuts straight to gameplay. We're in the UK in a residential area. We're on the pavement and we're basically wire cutting our way into this safe house. And there are a bunch of other soldiers around. Everyone's got silencers on. Everyone's moving very quietly. In your ear, your operator kind of manager? I don't know what the word would be, but the guy basically calling the shots is probably Price. It might have been someone else, but probably Price. And he's whispering the whole time because you're staying dead silent. It's nighttime. The only lighting around you is like a street light that's on the pavement and light coming from the actual house itself. So it's dark for sure. And you basically make your way into this little compound. The first thing that happens is you climb a ladder or climb up at least on the outside of the building and you see a woman getting taken down in the kitchen. Now, the way it works, the way it's presented to you is that the woman is coming into the room and she doesn't know that there's actually already one of these the secret, I was going to say secret agents, secret service. No, that's the wrong word. She doesn't know that there's one of these soldiers behind the door already just waiting there being dead silent. And so she walks into the room and says, don't worry, I'll put the kettle on. And as soon as she's done saying it, boom, a hand goes around her mouth. She gets pushed to the floor. She's just prone, completely can't move, can't speak, nothing. And all that's said to her is one of the soldiers just goes quiet. That's it. And so at this point, I'm honestly gripped. I think that this looks really cool so far. We are covertly breaking into this building, this mystery building that we don't really know the full layout of. We don't know who's going to be where, etc. And someone right in front of my eyes has just stealth taken down a person without alerting any of the rest of the house. And then we're in. We've got our access point. We're ready to start progressing through the house and try to get to wherever we're trying to get to. You step into another room, take some more people down with your silenced weapons and they'll die pretty quickly. But what you notice in that next room is that there's a second of hesitation. It's very, very brief, but there is a slight little slither of time where you as a player pause to go, is this person going to shoot me or are they just going to put their hands in the air? Like, what are they going to do? And it seems like that's been very much engineered into the gameplay. There is a split second in every one of these encounters I'm about to describe, where you as a player have to make a choice and you have to make it fast because what's going to happen if you don't make it quick enough is either you're going to get shot or if you make the decision too hastily, you're going to shoot the person in front of you even if they're innocent. So that moral complexity that they talked about and that they set up is already revealing itself in each of these rooms. The next room you go into has a dude and he's holding a woman hostage. He's got a pistol in his hand. He's got his arm around the woman's neck and he basically says, don't come in or I'll shoot her. So you as a player don't want to harm the innocent woman. But when you take out the dude with a well-placed bullet, the woman then reaches for a gun herself and is about to try and shoot you before you then take her down. And you begin to realize that the people in this house aren't going to play by clear cut rules. They're going to pretend to be innocent and then they're going to try and get the drop on you and use that to their advantage. It's at this point that night vision gets switched on. I think the night vision actually looks pretty good. It's much more sophisticated than the previous night vision from COD 4 Modern Warfare. Now it's actually properly rendered and the lighting in the scene is accurate based on how well you would be able to see if you actually had night vision goggles in real life and were looking into a scene like that. It also provides this kind of vignette effect around your view. So you really feel like you're in the space and you're almost looking through the eyes of an actual soldier on a mission like this. It's once you've put the night vision goggles on that you notice that in the room, there's like a bathroom door that's mysteriously just closed. And as you go towards it, you actually get shot through the bathroom door and you then react to that by spraying along the wall and your gun is silenced, so it doesn't make too much noise. And you're able to see that the way that bullet penetration works in this game seems to have been updated as well. It's almost like the division kind of system now where you shoot through something and it's not just a bullet mark on a wall. Like you guys remember playing 
rust, for example, right? And shooting through loads of surfaces on that map. You would never actually make a hole in the surface, you would just shoot through. Whereas now, there are holes in the wall, and you can see through the holes. So you shoot through the wall, you take the guy down, and you keep moving. Now the first point where my immersion was broken came in the corridor leaving this room. So we go out of the room, and there's a very obvious door to my left, and then there's a staircase on the right hand side that we need to go past the door to get to, and then we can keep going further up the building. The door on the left hasn't been talked about, it hasn't been highlighted, it's just there, and you can see that it's there. And what the game does, and it just felt a bit annoying really, was it makes one of your friends, one of your characters, one of your soldiers that's in your crew, just walk right past the door without caring about it at all. They don't check it, nothing. And so, of course, what happens is they just walk past the door like an idiot without checking what's going on and they get shot through it. And so your friend is wounded, you quickly rush into action and help drag your friend out of the way and then you take down the people in the room. But it just felt like if we're this elite group of soldiers, you're not going to really carefully clear every room in the house apart from this one room that happens to have a shut door. Like, no, that's not going to be the way that works, of course. So... I kind of feel like it was just almost gratuitously added to show that your teammates can get injured in here as well. Like, that's a risk that you're facing at all times. But I just felt like the soldier should have known better. Anyway, it's at this point that the controversial bit of the demo happens that everyone's been talking about and that I think is going to really turn some heads. So, you're going up the stairs that I mentioned a second ago, and it's very obvious that you're now going towards a child's bedroom because there's like a cuddly toy on the wall, there's a load of pictures of people with a baby, there's just kid stuff essentially on a shelf. And your character goes, uh, takes a look at it, and then uh, back to the stairs and you keep going up. You then go towards a room and you hear a kid crying and it's like, okay, they're really going there, are we? And as you enter the room, a woman runs across your vision and goes to the crib where the baby is and where it's crying and basically grabs it and says like, don't shoot or something or something along those lines. Now it's clear to me that in this scenario, what the game is doing is it's presenting a counter example to the few examples that we saw previously of these bad guys in this house reaching for guns and then shooting you. In this counter example, the woman is reaching for a child and is innocent, or at least isn't someone that is posing an imminent threat. And so you, as a player, in that split second window, are supposed to make the split second decision not to shoot the baby in the head thinking that it's a gun or something like that. And I don't know, man. Honestly, at the time, it felt a little less awful than I've heard it described because hearing, yes, there's a point in the Modern Warfare demo where you pick up a gun and aim the gun at a baby and if you want, you can shoot. That doesn't sound very good. And that doesn't really sound like COD either, right? But in the context, it wasn't that bad. However, I still feel like it's almost a little gratuitous, just the fact that they use this woman running across the room as a very obvious, oh, there's a bad guy, oh wait, no it's not, and you nearly killed a kid. It's something that I think some people are gonna have a real problem with when it comes out. I personally think that that territory which they're trying to explore isn't something that really motivates me to play the game, but also isn't something that turns me away. I don't really think that Call of Duty would ever get to the point where I was killing so many innocent people that I felt like I just couldn't keep going with the game. Like, it's a game, right? And that's something important to remember in these kind of conversations where people are talking about things that might strike others as being really controversial, it is just a game. And in this case, as much as what they do might be distasteful to some, to others, it's just gonna be a scenario in a game that they don't experience as often, I guess. I do think that it's a very fine line that Call of Duty are trying to tread, and I'm doubtful that they're gonna be able to do it tastefully in every single scenario that they try and bring into the game. I feel like there are gonna be elements of the game where they try and throw you some moral question and you're going to be sitting there going, you know what, this is actually taking me out of the experience because they're gamifying war and gamifying war, in COD especially, is always going to end up with things either being more silly than they really are or them trying to have some kind of serious take from something that 
is... I mean, it's COD for goodness sake, right? Like, I just... Like I said at the beginning, don't see COD as like a milsim where I need to feel like the people dying around me are actually dying. Anyway, it wasn't long after this part of the demo that the whole thing ended and they were like, thank you, we're not going to be taking any questions right now, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I was left afterwards with this feeling of, okay, I get it now. I get what they're going for with Modern Warfare. But at the same time, genuinely, I feel like it's way too early to actually make any kind of judgment about this game. Like, I'd seen 20 minutes of gameplay, and I still, to this day, don't really know what the moment-to-moment -moment combat is going to be like in the sort of six, seven-hour campaign that they give us. I know that there's going to be a 15-minute section where you're being very sneaky and quiet, but that's not what COD is. COD isn't a very sneaky and quiet game for six or seven hours, right? There are moments where you're running through a battlefield and you're shooting everyone in front of you. There are moments with big explosions. There are moments with cool set pieces. There are moments with cool characters that you interact with that do cool stuff themselves. And very few of those sorts of things were actually present in the demo. I kind of feel like I saw an excerpt of one of the themes that they're trying to go for with Modern Warfare, but I didn't actually see the game, if that makes sense. I've seen so many people saying, this is an Instacop, this is a pre-order game, this is a day one, whatever. My opinion is that you shouldn't really pre-order games. It's very rarely a good idea to do so, even if it turns out to be a great game, just because in the same way that people hate microtransactions, pre-orders sort of feed into that same issue where you can get a game that doesn't have microtransactions on launch, like COD doesn't have every year, and then suddenly after a month, they put in a load of microtransactions and jabait you all into getting invested in that system. It's really scummy and you face that risk if you pre-order a game, especially this far out. And you then further expose yourself to risk because of the fact that they offer things in the pre-order like a prestige token, I think it was for Black Ops 4, but you can redeem that now. And as soon as you've redeemed it, you can't cancel your pre-order anymore because you've redeemed one of the pre-order items. So they're really sneaky with those things. And I don't think based on what we've seen, you have enough information to say Modern Warfare is going to be good. You just don't. We've seen publicly, what, two minutes of it? And privately, I've seen about 15, 20. And that little bit looks cool, but who knows what the multiplayer is going to be like? Who knows what the Spec Ops is going to be like? It's still early days. Anyway, hopefully this gave you a bit of an honest insight into what the gameplay actually entailed. I tried to kind of paint a picture for you guys of what was actually going on in the mission, as well as telling you some of the pertinent details about how it felt to watch. I've seen a lot of people saying it looks absolutely terrible because it looks so distasteful. It's Call of Duty. They're exploring really serious themes, but it's COD and there's just a complete disconnect there. I've seen others saying they were on the edge of their seat the whole time. They felt like it was absolutely riveting. They were glued to their screen. And I think that that kind of dichotomy of player experiences is going to continue as we go towards launch. And so videos like this, where I'm just sort of giving you unfiltered thoughts, are going to be increasingly important as we learn more about the game, because it could still honestly go either way. So thanks for watching, guys. Drop a like if you've enjoyed. Also, if you haven't done so already, click the bell and turn on notifications, because YouTube's really trying to kill me off right now, guys. Like, YouTube's been doing a madness on my channel recently, and it would be great to have some more of you guys with the bell enabled so you don't miss any uploads from me. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.